Hey guys, welcome back to Embers and Ash. My name's Ashley, if you didn't know, and today I wanted to take you through all the things I am doing or have done to prep for uh, the baby, labor and delivery, more specifically, postpartum. What is this video? It's a labor and delivery and postpartum prep. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just taking you through it with me. Um, I don't have Rook with me today. He's at his grandparents' house, so I'm able to really like settle into baby mode. But I'm here today. I'm 37 weeks pregnant. Here's my baby bump for you. Uh, so really, baby can come any day now. I had Rook uh, the day after my due date, so I don't know what that says about this baby. I think nothing. <laughs> like, I hear all the time of people having their second child earlier, but a lot of people will go to 40 weeks for all their children. So really, there's no knowing. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna take you through my hospital bag today, uh, prepping the car seat, postpartum gear, our kind of nursery nook situation, and hopefully that will help any other expecting moms out as you guys prepare for your own babies. But before we get into it, I want to thank today's sponsor, who is BetterHelp. If you haven't heard me talk about BetterHelp before, they are an online counseling service that provides a platform for clients to be matched with professional counselors and conduct therapy sessions online. They have over 20,000 licensed therapists and have helped over 2 million people. The way it works is BetterHelp will assess your needs through an online quiz and then match you up with a therapist that they think best suits you but if at any point you are not super happy with that pairing you can always switch it at any time for free I love being able to share this platform with you guys because I really do believe and a lot of people believe that having access to therapy is so important for your mental health for your family as a mom you want to make sure that you are in a good headspace so you can be the best mom you can be for your children and being able to do this counseling online just makes it that much more attainable for so many people. My favorite perks about BetterHelp are that it's available worldwide. You can message your counselor at any time. You get two hours a month with your counselor. They have group in ours as well, and it is more affordable than traditional counseling, and financial aid is also available. It is not a crisis line. It is not self-help. It is professional counseling done securely online. So if you want to start living a happier life today, check out the link in the description. It's betterhelp.com slash embers and ash, and that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P and join the over 2 million people who have decided to take charge of their mental health with the help of experienced professionals. You also get 10% off your first month when you use my link. All right, thank you so much to BetterHelp for being an ongoing sponsor. Now let's, let's get into my hospital bag. You guys know I am more of a minimal person, especially second time round. Uh, you know, a lot of moms say this, but second time round, you know what your hospital offers and what you need, what you don't need. Every hospital is different, um, especially like city to city, country to country. I see a lot of hospital bag videos from people in the States and I'm in Canada, so it's a little different. But again, every hospital is different. Talk to your doctor, talk to your midwife to get insight on what they will provide. But honestly, being overprepared is not a bad thing. I did pack this last week, which I'm thankful I did because I had an episode of prodromal labor, which kind of put me on edge of like, am I actually going to be going into labor soon? Um, so it was just nice having this packed and I'm going to show you what I've put in this. So this is just a, a duffel bag. Um, this is my stuff, Josh's stuff, baby stuff. It's all based on my how my last pregnancy went or my last birthing experience went. And I, I'm a little worried I've pigeonholed myself too much because I'm not guaranteed to have the same birth. But at the same time, if there's anything we desperately need, a family member can like pick it up for us. So this is what I'm going with. I'm just gonna start pulling things out and sharing them with you. I just added this in today and it's a spare set of clothes for Josh. I had some underwear and socks in there for him, but I decided to add a shirt and pants because I was uh, listening to a birth podcast, a birth story, and the person was saying that during their birth, their husband was holding them while they were contracting and their water broke all over their husband. So I was like, oh, I should bring him some clothes in case he gets messy. Didn't happen last time, but obviously that's a real possibility. I do also have some PJs for him because he will be staying in the hospital with me obviously. Clothing for myself consists of just a dress and some socks. 
I spent my whole time in the hospital last time just in the hospital gown. I had zero interest in changing because it was just the most practical. It was comfortable. Um, it worked well with nursing. We didn't have any visitors, so I wasn't worried about, you know, being decent. And I just liked it that way. I'm planning on, you know, hopefully if I go into labor at home, then I can wear something intentional to the hospital that is comfortable and that I can wear back. Last time I wore biker shorts and an oversized shirt, and that was really nice for um, after I gave birth. But I did want to bring a dress. Uh, I think I did this last time too. Again, just in case I do have my water break on me and ruin all my clothes. If something happens, I should have something. So this is just like really simple dress. I don't really get the whole idea of like a going home outfit for yourself <laughs> when like we're 10 minutes away from the hospital. Like why does it really matter what I'm wearing? Um, and then socks, because if you know my birth story from last time, I peed on my feet, so I need a spare set of socks. <laughs> I'm also gonna be wearing my Birkenstocks because again, I am lucky enough to give birth in the summer. So they're just the most versatile shoe that you can wear in the hospital. Um, I wore them in the shower in the hospital too. So that's the plan. As for baby, I'm bringing two swaddles. Um, they do offer swaddle blankets at the hospital, but they're not stretchy and I thrived off of the, or I guess my baby thrived off of the stretchy ones to be able to hold their arms down. Um, so I'm bringing two just in case one gets dirty, you know. I did bring more baby clothes than I need for sure, but I kind of felt like overpacking for in this aspect, just in case we're there longer than we um, expect to be. Last time I was there for I think two days total and I didn't actually ever put the baby in any clothes. I just had them wrapped in a swaddle blanket in their diaper until we were going home. So I don't know what'll happen this time, but I'm bringing this little onesie by Little and Lively. And then I have this one, it's super cute. It has like a ribbed pattern on it. I don't know if you can see that. Um, this one's by Wheat. And then I am bringing a headband in case it is a girl. Just a little headband. And I have three bonnets. Talk about excessive. So I originally just packed these two. And then I was looking at pictures of Rook in the hospital when he was born. And I brought these exact items and I didn't want my photos of the baby to be the same as they were with Rook, like wearing the same thing. Just so they feel like more of an individual, I guess. Like obviously we're reusing all of Rook's clothes, but at least in the hospital, I wanted something a little different. So I'm still bringing these bonnets, but I did go out and buy another one um, just in this cream color. These are by Quincy May. They're my favorite for um, baby life. And I think his newborn announcement photo was this combo, I'm pretty sure. And I was thinking of doing this combo for this baby, as long as they don't poop on anything. Or I might put them in proper clothes, I don't know. All this baby stuff is so small, I'm like, who cares if I bring it? A bit too much and then going home outfit is the same as last time sorry if you've already seen those videos but uh it's this little onesie from the 90s this is the onesie that myself and my siblings were brought home from the hospital in so my mom gave it to me to use for my kids uh Rook wore this home from the hospital and we took it off immediately because it's so old and like itchy <laughs> um you know it's 30 years old now, which is crazy. Uh, but yeah, little baby's gonna come home in this lovely 90s sandpaper onesie, sleeper, whatever you call it. As for toiletries, keeping it really simple again, I have eyelash extensions. I don't really wear makeup other than that. So um, I'm not bringing makeup, I'm not bringing shampoo. I'll shower there, but I'm not gonna wash my hair, too much work. So really I'm just bringing some deodorant for Josh and I. Uh, native deodorant is what we use. Some toothpaste and toothbrushes. I have a little travel toothpaste here. The grocery store I was at didn't have travel toothbrushes, so I just bought these like kids toothbrushes. It's fine. Well, they'll probably be like a single use kind of thing. And then floss, of course. Uh, charging cords are definitely a necessity. 
got to keep everyone updated on what's happening with the baby and then headphones was something that I left out last time and I regretted it because sometimes Josh was napping and I was awake and I wanted to like you know watch YouTube videos or something and I didn't have headphones so I couldn't do that. I'm also gonna bring a water bottle. Hospital water is really gross so I mean I'm probably gonna go through this and have to get it refilled but at least I'll start off with some good water. I have some crackers. Last time I brought junk food and I was in no mood to eat junk food after going through like birth and such. So crackers in case I feel nauseous, Josh feels nauseous, and then I'm just planning on bringing some fresh fruit when I go into labor. We usually have it in the house so just grab some before we leave. I'm also bringing some games. Uh, might be a bit of excessive, but I did want this last time because I had an epidural, we were just hanging out, I had like I think it was like five hours where I was doing nothing but waiting to progress and we wished that we had some games to play. So these are just simple ones. Hero Realms, it's a deck building game, and Cribbage. Uh, like who knows what's gonna happen this time, right? Maybe I'll have a super quick labor and there's no time for games. Um, no time even for an epidural in which that would be completely useless, but either way I'm bringing them. And then the last thing I have in here is just wipes. Our hospital provides Huggies diapers, so I don't need to bring that. They don't provide proper wipes. They have like napkins uh, that you can get wet and use, so it's just nicer to have your own. And then I do have some things left on the list to pack last minute. Oh, I do need to grab uh, Josh some earplugs because he gets very anxious during uh, birth and everything. And if he has some earplugs, he'll like be able to nap easier. Uh, so we're gonna do that. I also need to grab my Polaroid camera. It was nice having it last time for cute little newborn photos. And that's pretty much it. Um, no postpartum gear because they provide all of that. Uh, I'm gonna use their little like squirty bottle. I mean really you can spontaneously go into labor and go to the hospital with nothing and you'll be fine, right? A lot of this is just like comfort items um, to make your life a little easier, but yeah, keeping it super simple and hopefully I have the exact same birth as last time. Obviously that's not guaranteed, but I had such a good time last time. Okay, next step I wanted to show you just our little nursery nook. Um, so the bassinet's going right here beside me at night. It's not here right now because uh, it takes up a lot of space and I don't want it there when the baby isn't actually here. I have this little basket here that is just going to change with supplies as I need them. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to want, uh, but I have my nursing pads here, a sound machine, which I don't know if I'm going to use or at least when I'm gonna use it. it. It's so different with a second child, like needing to drown out the noise of Rook. <laughs> but we do have a fan that we run at night now that it's summer, so I don't know, maybe eventually we'll use this. I also have our monitor in here because in case I go into labor overnight, we need someone to watch Rook. And thankfully, we have Dan and Maggie who live downstairs. So the plan is that Josh is gonna break into their house. Uh, we have a key and set up the uh, monitor in our hallway and their hallway so they can hear when Rook wakes up and grab him for us and then um, Josh's mom will come in the morning and watch him. So that's there for that. I have the night light and that's it here. Again, I think this is going to change like I'll probably add snacks if I feel like it when the baby's actually here. And then the closet is turning into a temporary change station. So we have our change pad in the kids room but at night we need somewhere to change the baby's diaper and I don't want to bring the whole setup in here because during the day I don't want to lock myself in here and have Rook running around out there by himself. I don't know, it, this felt like a good idea. <laughs> so we're borrowing a change pad from a friend and then I just have this basket here with, you know, diapers, wipes, uh, change of clothes, swaddle, burp cloth. Uh, yeah, it just kind of works well on our dresser. It's not the cutest area, but it's functional. All right, next step. We are in the kids room. Uh, the bassinet is here again, just temporarily. I have a bunch of toys in the way. Um, this is an exciting step. I need to get the car seat out of here. I know the closet is a lot, <laughs> but there's just so many things when you have two kids and you can't get rid of them until all your kids have like surpassed the newborn phase, you know? 
So anyways, I'm gonna lug that thing out of there, get it set up for the newborn size, and then we're gonna be putting it in Josh's car and leaving our car here with Rook's car seat in it so that whoever's watching Rook, Josh's mom, <laughs> can drive him around, that kind of thing. seat is all set up I'm pretty sure um, I'm gonna double check the instructions to make I make sure I got it all right uh, but this is pretty surreal like setting it up in such a small setting obviously I know the baby's <laughs> coming but this this feels different like bringing back a lot of a lot of memories good memories so um, the Nuna is super easy to install into your car so I'm just gonna throw it into Josh's car when he gets home from work today. And I also did grab the adapters for attaching it to our stroller and turning the stroller into a double, um, all in here. Okay, next up I wanna talk about kids toys. So, you know, every second time mom, I guess, is worried about how their first child is gonna react to the baby. And, uh, you know, you obviously want to make it as easy of a transition as possible. For the first few weeks, Josh is going to be home. We're kind of thinking he's going to take two weeks off because that's what he took off for Rook and it was fine, but we'll feel it out. So those first two weeks, it's going to be a lot easier having more hands on deck. Uh, Rook, I think, is going to feel more loved. <laughs> but when Josh goes back to work, it's going to be a hard transition, obviously. And I don't want him to feel just so neglected. So I figured if I get him some new toys, hopefully he will feel less neglected because he wants to be doing something else. He wants to be playing with his new toys. So he just had his birthday. I got him the Ikea kitchen. He's been loving it. But I also wanted to make sure to get him a new Love Every box. Um, because these toys actually keep your child entertained because they're made specifically for their age, um, developmentally, like for what their brain is doing at the moment. So they did send this to me. I just want to share real quickly what's in this box. This is the helper for ages 25, 26, 27. I've given him a couple of the toys already to play with. It comes with these flowers, which are such a simple toy where you just put them in the holes, but he loves this. He loves like pointing out the colors and like organizing them however he sees fit uh, so that's really fun and then I also gave him the two-sided puzzle which has been very entertaining for him because he's outgrown all his other puzzles they're too boring for him so you put these pieces together and you know fill out the puzzle but you can also flip it over and do a whole other puzzle with the same shapes. It confused him pretty good at first. He's like, what's going on here? Um, and you know, he's still figuring it out, but it's definitely keeping him very engaged. And then it comes with these cue cards that you can use to either kind of learn the phrases for the action, or they talk about like planning out your day ahead of time using these cue cards, like, washing hands, singing a song, getting dressed, snack time. I think this will be especially helpful with the new baby, getting him mentally prepared at the beginning of the day, um, just knowing what to expect, because everything is unexpected when there's a new baby. It also comes with this uh, like tic-tac-toe board, which is color coordinated. I'm really excited for this one, especially because it's the kind of toy that you can play together sitting on the couch <laughs> so like i can be nursing the baby and he can be with me playing this game like sorting our colors um i just i don't want him to feel like when i'm with the baby he doesn't get time with me so it's really cool to have toys that we can all enjoy together the box obviously comes with a book as well this one is all about making muffins and there it's a what do you call this type of book where they have the, like the flip up tabs he's gonna love this because he loves cooking uh he loves baking he loves numbers right now we're working on he knows one and, and two <laughs> finally the coolest thing in the box is a i haven't assembled it yet 
because again, I'm saving it for when the baby comes. But it's a little sink that actually dispenses water. I'm so excited to use this outside with him. You know, you can use it inside as well, but I would love to spend some time on the deck with the baby, especially if they have jaundice, get some sunshine on them, and Rook will be fully entertained playing with his own little sink independently. Oh, I almost forgot. There's also this uh, paint book, I think they call it, where it's this little like travel book with paint pens and paper. I've seen a lot of people use these like at restaurants, I think is a really good idea. So yeah, obviously I'm in love with Love Every's play kits. They're really the baseline of the toys that we use for Rook, especially the first year of his life. We only had Love Every toys because they are just really all you need. So I will link them in the description again. I cannot rave about them enough. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about is postpartum. I think I'm pretty much prepared. Again, it all depends what kind of birth you have. Like if I have a third degree tear for some reason, then I am probably going to need more than this. But this is what I'm starting with. The other thing I learned from last time is that you don't need to have everything ready right away. Like you can go to the grocery store, your spouse can go to the grocery store and pick something up. This is like a rare case where I feel better being underprepared because I don't want to overbuy. So I'll go through everything quickly because there's not much. I have three different types of pads. <laughs> I know a lot of people use, um, let me zoom out a little bit. I know a lot of people use diapers. I had zero interest in doing that. By the time one of these gets filled up, I want to switch it out anyways. Why would I want a diaper to wear? Um, more comfortable in my underwear. <laughs> At the beginning though, the hospital does give you mesh underwear and those are the best. They're so comfy. Um, you put your pads on top of them. So I started out with that. Um, my hospital also gave it's so funny. It's like a set of tea bags, just regular tea um, that you get wet in warm or cold water, depending on how you feel. And you lay that on top of the pad. It's very soothing. So I have never heard of it before and haven't heard anyone else talk about it online, but I really enjoyed it. But yeah, so I have three different types of pads. These ones are you know, overnight. So that's going to be for the start. Then some like regular ones and some panty liners because you bleed for quite a while. So I'll probably need more than this, but that's what I'm starting with. I also don't like um, scented pads or underwear and, or I mean diapers. And I feel like most of the diapers, like adult diapers you get have a weird scent. I've heard of some people getting rashes from that. Not ideal. So I like to get the ones that are, whatchamacallit, like perfume free, color free, that kind of thing. And then I have Earth Mama Perineal Spray. This is the same bottle I have from last time. I think it's like half Full. So if I need more, I'll go pick up some more. I would just spray this directly on myself. We don't do like dermaplast in Canada. I don't know why. That's what it's called, right? I always see everyone using numbing spray. And I asked the person at the pharmacy about it and they're like, we don't have that. You shouldn't spray that on yourself. Not that you shouldn't, but like any of the options we have here, you shouldn't. I don't know. It would be nice to be numbed down there. <laughs> and then lastly, I have a combo of tux pads and witch hazel. I tried the like off-brand tux pad alternative and they just weren't as hydrated. So that's why I got the witch hazel was to like add more moisture to it. But even like with these tux pads, they're great. Um, in those early days, I would just pour a bunch of this on my pad as well. So that was my sequence. I would wear the mesh underwear, put a pad on it, throw a couple of these down, pour some more of this on top, and then spray myself, good to go. I also don't have a uh, Perry bottle of my own. Everyone complains about the hospital one. I had zero issue with it. Like, I get that the um, Freedom Mom, it's Freedom Mom, right? Theirs has an angle, so it angles up towards you, but even using the one from the hospital, if you squeeze it, it'll spray on you. I had no problem and I don't like buying extra things. So that's all the stuff I have for postpartum. Hopefully it'll be fine. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, everything I have to share with you preparing for birth and postpartum. I'm feeling very ready. I got my newborn diapers. I got wipes loaded up. All the baby clothes are taken out. Uh, and now I just wait, wait another three weeks or more or less, who knows. Uh, but I am very mentally and 
I guess, physically <laughs> prepared for this child to come. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, it helped you if you're also preparing for birth. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.